Last year, the theme at the general dinner upstairs, the Maimed Lechveit HaTorah was Shesulam Eves HaShem. And we find the difference between that which is Shosel, which is implanted, which is entrenched, and though Loichena Rishoyim, which is not the case by Rishoyim, which is not firmly rooted and can easily, through some Ruchai, some wind, just totally blow it away. The Balasulam, the Pirish and the Zayar, he says, we find today, in his time, we find a lot of bilbul, a lot of confusion as to what's right, what's wrong, what's a tzaddik, what's a rasha. Seems like a lot of people are doing the same thing. What's at the core? And he explains that the difference is you find in what's the product. Those who are an eitz oisa peri, those who are a tree which is, produces fruit, a tree doesn't need to produce fruit for its own sustainability. And yet it chooses to give over fruit, which sometimes looks a lot nicer than in itself, is a sign that this is loichein or rishoyim, this is, these are tzaddikim. Rishoyim are self-absorbed, only keep it for themselves, and unless there's something in it for themselves, they're not doing it, and if they are, it usually comes at a watered-down version. An eitz asada, an eitz isapri, needs to live on a very lean diet. Water, some other t- ingredients, and they produce beautiful, beautiful fruit. Always looking to give over more than what they themselves intake. Rishoyim are the exact opposite. We have within our midst, Azaz Chos, to have, we talk about legadless, <coughs> a godol bakol, someone whose entire essence, entire kishkes, is to be doilu mashke, lives on a very lean diet, nothing for themselves, only how can I be mahana the tzibur, mahana klal yisrael in every way. There's not a moised, ha a moised, a chesed, l'chalu l'prat, that's not affected in some way from rebellion Brudni Shlita. As we see, this derech of godless, this derech of tzaddikim, halavai, we could go in his ways in some way, and it's our little bracha, at least my humble bracha, by the covenant of the tzibur, the cholasha yase yatzliach. When we're talking about an oilam atayra, marbitze atayra, people coming lechfeira atayra, so the questions that were picked are ones that are more, we're looking for answers and a conversation on the level that's appropriate for this tzibur. To so not stomp questions to evoke controversy or to create a little bit of a, another cliche question, but for what's tailor made to this Eilam Atayra. So, Bishus Rebbe, if I may start. Many are following the news today. And they know there's a lot going on in Eretz Yisrael. Many are following it in order to be nice about all. Obviously, there's a curiosity. But for an Eilam, for the most part, looking to be nice but all, to feel a little bit, to be empathic to what's going on by others that were not there physically, and many are purposely ignoring the news. What's the proper ashkof and what's the proper balance? Everything that happens in the world, both natural phenomenons and wars and everything that happens in the world are preordained from Shemayim and are meant to be noticed and to be internalized and to figure the, out what does Shemayim want from us by letting us know these and these stories? Whether we approve or we don't approve of how the news is disseminated, but Lamaisa, the fact of the matter is that everybody knows the news. It's uh, even if a person is nizhar, not to 
have access to, whether it's electronic media, even to radios. People go as far as abstaining from a newspaper, but nobody doesn't know the news. Everybody knows what happened at Simchas Torah, and ultimately everybody knows the scope of what happened and that it's continuing. And there is no day came out in the last three months that didn't see Jewish loss of life a day more, a day less. But it's been consistent that there's always been Rahman al days of, of Jewish loss of life. So what is... What are we supposed to, how are we supposed to visualize it? One thing is certain, the Yitzhahara does not want us to visualize it in the way that Hashem meant that we should view it. Because that's his job. His job is to confuse us, to make us mixed up, to make us dwell on the trivial and forget the bigger picture, the more profound picture. In our responses, he wants us to respond in the least meaningful way possible and still consider ourselves responders. So this is all part of this tremendous mavucha that we find ourselves in. First thing a person has to chazarayin that the Rebbein Shalom endows each one of, every one of us with Deya, Bina, and Haskel. We say, Atoch Oinenli Odom Das. It's the first Bakosha that we ask for in Shem Nesre. Atoch Oinenli Odom Das, Choneinu Meyitcha. Deya, Bina, and Haskel. Morris says in Brochus that in Moitzer Shabbos, we ask here Avdolo Betfila, why we mask her Avdolah B'tfilah and Choynein Adoas? So Gemara says something extremely, extremely direct and sharp. She'im ein das Avdolah minayin. Being able to be mavdil. Two things that seem superficially close to each other, but they're really not. You need Deya. And we daven for that. So for example, I don't know if anybody in this room is troubled by that, but Rabbi Weinberger just said, a lot of people don't want to know the news. What does that mean they don't want to know the news? They can't cope with knowing the news because it confuses them. Because it's a war in Israel and the safety of the people living in Eretz Israel and the safety of Achenu Bnei Yisrael that are on the front, B'derech HaTeva depends with the war having a victorious solution for the Klal Yisrael. And that means Klal Yisrael, eventually Bezer Hashem Yisbarach, is going to have a victory on the battlefield, and it'll be decisive, hopefully, that to some, to some extent will give us breathing space and to be able to go on with Avodah Hashem and live meaningful Jewish lives in Eretz Yisrael and all over. Hopefully the anti-Semitism that's rampant today, even in a Malchus Shel Chesed where we live in, will also somehow be tempered when that war is ending by Ezra Hashem decisively. But to some people, because the state of Israel unfortunately, doesn't meet the standards and the expectations of an Erlich of a Shoy Material Mitzvah, of, of who we are. We, we're profoundly maimin, like it says, nani maimin. Shekol ha-toyer anasuna biyadeinu, hi anasuna l'moyshe rabbeinu. Shezois ha-toyer loy tehei muchlefes, veloy tei torecheres. And there is no such a thing as Jewish government not premised on Shemir Shabbos, Jewish government not premised 
and running away from Ervas Dover, from Ktusha Samachne, Vechulu Vechulu. So it's confusing. At the end of the day, when the Jewish people are victorious, the powers to be that run the state of Israel, who govern the state of Israel, whether it's from the right or from the left, are people very, very far from Torah, very, very, very far from Emuna, And it's like some people take it as a confusion. So Israel's going to win, so people are going to come more Zionistic, whatever that means. And the, and the questions state, and our young kids are going to want to be soldiers. This confusion that people have, this confusion is coming from the Eight Sahara. And he's using the method of the main das of Dolominayim. Let's dissect what's happening. The danger to Jews collectively and in the Yidin collectively and individually. How many mishpachis, their loved ones are at war now, are in Gaza, fighting the most brutal, animalistic sonim that we ever experienced, who have up-to-date weaponry, electronic weaponry. And it's a classical Abar Lahargacha Ashkem Lahargai. And we should be davening to eliminate every single one of these Rishayim, these Yishmaelim. And of course, the ones that are the Shluchim to, to, to eliminate them are the Yiddish soldiers. So because the Yiddish soldiers <coughs> were drafted by the state of Israel, that makes them agents of some ideology called Zionism. Countries at war. So the enemies did what they did on Simchas Torah. We have to defend. We have to defend the people there. Do we realize how many homes are affected by 175 Yiddish kinder that fell since the invasion of Gaza? And what about the 1,400 that fell before them? We don't understand every mishpacha. How many yisoyimim? How many almanis? How many parents that are grieving for children? Just anecdotally, I spent some time last week with a Baal that was in Eretz Yisrael, Shabbos Vayechi. <clears throat> so he wanted to do something meaningful for the COVID Shabbos for people affected by the war. So he went to the mayor of Beit Shemesh and he asked her, is there anything that he, she thinks would be meaningful that him and his wife could do on a scale, on a citywide scale, for the people serving in the army. She tells him, this Shabbos, 1,800 women in the town are making Shabbos by themselves because their husband is at war. 1,800 mishpachis that made Shabbos in a little town. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not bigger than Borough Park could be. A klein shtetl. 18 and said most of them, just for whoever it makes a difference to, most of them are Shem Torah, Shem Shabbos. This is people that are going to meet Hashem, reunite with their loved ones. But 1,800 people made, so they went and they sent Shabbos packages to all 1,800 nice, beautiful Shabbos packages. But to me, when you hear that, Make a chesh. What's going on in Yerushalayim? What's going on in all the other towns? North, south, east, west. It's Yiddish Kinder. Achenu B'nai Yisrael. So what am I getting stuck on how that's going to affect ideology? Rabbi, I don't mean to interrupt, but Kedar Kachov HaKodesh. Rabbi saying Galat. It's Yashar. So what's going on? So why do we have this issue that we have, especially Bokhrim I just told you, the Eight Sahara. We love extremist views. It's sometimes even Bachrim. I know Rebbe's been unfortunately the recipient of it sometimes. I'm, I'm telling you again. There's a Yetzirah that we shouldn't steig from the war. 
Okay, so her, the last thing he needs is that this war should bring a massive level of steiging by Yidin. This war has a chance to be in the car of real Rechaikim, and to us, even more than that, to be Makar of Kroivim, which Adarava, this is what we're about today. This is what the Kenya Masechta is about. We could steig, we could grow in Amuna. We could grow in Avas Yisrael. We could grow in understanding the chesed of Hashem. We could grow in Midas, in Noise Ba'oil, in davening for Yidin, caring for Yidin, being empathetic for Yidin. That's something the Yitzhahara doesn't want. And the best way he could get us, the cream of the crop, is by being metashtish, by being give, seeding seeds of confusion. What about, it's, it's what's in plain English, it's tuyot. And that's what I'm saying. That's the Gemara in Brachis, Imein Das Avdola Minayin. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to make an Avdola. You don't have to be a brisker to make an Avdola between davening for a Yid that's at war. That's called a soldier. And for davening for the glory of a secular state of Israel. You have to be with Chaim Brisker to make a, a Shnei Dinim in that? Really? Even if you learn Leicht, Without too much amkis, you need to, from a posh the Gemara, from, from learning the Gemara daf yoimi dik, you can't figure it out. That's pure yetsahara. It means das abdolaminayin, and it's on both sides. It's to the right. It's to the left. It's to the center. Yidden are nesunim batzara ubashivya. Every single one of them. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. If you maybe swing in the pendulum a little bit the other way, there are many Jewish or kosher, if you want to call it quote unquote publications, that sometimes do give a little bit more of that type of uh, is there something, is it okay? Is it something to take a little I, more of a stronger stance I, 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 I don't know, but again. Yeshorim Darke Hashem. Tzadikim Yelchu Boy, Upoishim Yikoshlu Boy. The Yashris of the Darke Hashem over here is to be noisiba oil, want a decisive end to this in favor of Cloud Yisrael and its individual members, and so we can move on and do great things in Yiddishkeit and in Torah and Avodah Hashem. If people choose to exploit it for Narishkeiten, okay, it's collateral damage, and we have to try to, yes, in your home, or with your Talmidim, you have to explain them the dangers of Kaychibi Yaitzim Yadi. If you want to make L'Tzenu Sadavay Dezara, and when there's Kaychibi Yaitzim Yadi, let them rationalize what happened on, on Semuchas Torah. How did these great Kaychibi Yaitzim Yadi stars allow such a thing like Simchas Torah to happen. Teretz is when the Rebbe, Im Hashem lo yishmar ir, shof shokat shoimer. So the shoimer could be going to West Point for 25 years, and he could be the greatest general in the world, and he could be considered not shayach, the biggest hot shot that ever was. Im Hashem lo yishmar ir, shof shokat shoimer. So what are you being, what are you being, what are you being koichi about? And that also doesn't need a rocket scientist. And Zweiter remain das of Dolominayan. And we don't talk. The Katrick Zayn of the Minister of Defense and the, what's it called, the Ramat Kal, the Chief of Staff, speak every single day about what happened that day in the war. Go fact check. Google it for those who still have Google. Google it and find out how many times the two of them said, Emir Hashem, Be'ezrus Hashem, and, and with the help of Hashem. Go find out. How far the Koichi Yod Sim Yodi goes. So there's nothing to get caught up with. Over the Yikiris, Yiddish Kinder are in Sarah. And storm the heavens for a Yeshua Sashem Karafine.
definitely see there's many more men here than, uh, than women, but uh, sometimes when the message is given over from the husband to the wife, maybe it's even more important. <coughs> We're well aware that Bachram today need, uh, need more space, a little bit of a lighter hand on them, less uh, aggressive approach, whether it's Ben Azmanim, Ben Astarim, Shabbos, or other times that, in general, how we uh, relate to them. Sometimes mothers who are mostly bred in, from a Beis Yaakov type system can be a little bit, uh, we call it maybe disillusioned or uh, disappointed at how their hush of a son seems to be doing in yeshivas, or um, maybe the question also refers to their husband, but we'll focus on the children. Um, and uh, exactly how they have that proper balance, that today this is what a bacher needs to thrive, and at the same time they could be steiging in Torah, but at the same time what they've been told Tyra is everything, I don't understand it, you have it, it's in front of you, we're giving everything possible, how are you not just drinking it up? So, <coughs> <coughs> in no way do I want to take exception to the Hegeshim and to the fire that's burning within the heart of a Yiddish mama that her whole life is contingent on having nachas from her children and she's wise enough to know what true nachas is and what life is really about. And she sees her teenage kids, usually we're dealing with the teenage years, and she sees disappointment. She, even if a child does well in yeshiva, masifta, they come home for an off Shabbos, and it's disappointing they're getting up late, many of them, and the late hours at night, and they're being out on the town, and uh, let me, I, I need a break. The mama Vesdach, that even in yeshiva, because you, most of the boys come home at night. So, oh, but that's the mama's feelings, and we validate it, and we respect it, and it's Kodesh Kadosh. However, I like to use two divrei chazal, two axioms of chazal. The first, an obvious one is, Keshem Shemitzvah Loimar Dovar Hanishma. Just like there's a tremendous mitzvah to constantly say appropriate things that will be heard. We try very much to, on all levels, to share with people wisdom that they will be able to accept and internalize. Kach mitzvah sheloi loimar dover she'ein nishma. It's not, it's not a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah to sh if the stuff that you want to say right now is MS Vyatsiv, but it won't be Nishma, then there's a mitzvah, don't say it. Mitzvah loy loyma davashain and nishma. That works between adults, in the family, out of family. You don't give musr where it's destined to be for sure ainoy nishma. Because it's it's worse. It only brings out hostility, oppositionary behavior, v'chulu, v'chulu. But there's even a sharper din, and that's an halacha. A person is not supposed to be makeh, benom ha'godon. If a person has a child that's older, and not anymore under bar mitzvah, but an older boy, an older teen, let's say, and they're tempted they're tempted to, to straighten things out and to stop the nonsense and the mischief. Sometimes using, using a makeh, whatever makeh means, and I don't know if makeh means necessarily physical. Even by, you could be makeh someone with shevet picha by saying something very, very derogatory, sharp, and, and, and it's Osr Lahako is Benoy Agodel. Why? I don't know if the Oilum knows why. But the, the reason that Chazal gave, and it's born in Shulchan Aruch, I think, is shocking because there's a danger that he'll be respond in kind and he'll be over Oru Makla over Vimoy. Or he'll be over an akos or av, which is a mis, which is which is which is chayve misa rachmon al itzlan. Or mekale loviv. Or oror makle oviv imoy. Do you want to put your kid in a makle oviv imoy place? That's an alocha. 
Also, la haka is benoyagolo. So how much we cry? It's a, it's ten o'clock. We know that it's already bordering on Zman Krishna, 9.30, 9.15, even on the second Zman. And it kills me that he's still laying in bed and he's not practicing out of bed on a, on a Sunday morning of an off Shabbos or on a Chalamoya day. And when he finally goes to shul, he goes to shul to daven at 11 o'clock with the hillbillies. Who does he daven with at 11 o'clock? It kills. But if you tell him a rebuke, that he doesn't have the ability to, to internalize safely, what's he gonna do when, when he, he's gonna eat a, he'll be makla he'll be makla imoy, asr, asr. So I think that really answers the question. Our hearts are in the right place and we have to sit down before, before a, a, an off Shabbos and strategize with the husband, and figure it out, how are we gonna get the kid to do what he's supposed to do? But if it's here, he came Thursday night, and already Friday morning, says Nish, my best plans were not working, and Shabbos, he's downing in in the truck driver minion. <laughs> Whichever, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. Also, mitzvah loy loy ma mishnah. Now, when he leaves, I have to sit down and strategize for the next off showers. Or when, he we, when, when it's over, we, but this is very important. And much of the damage that we see in our kids is from well-being parental intervention without Das Torah. The intervention did not take in heed of Chazal's dictate of measure what you're saying, tailor it, that it should be effective and not harmful. Mitzvah loy loymar, also la hako is benoy agoda. Sometimes the 11 o'clock minion these days is sometimes the minion after Ashkama. There's still hillbillies. I want to tell you something, Pilchus. I go to a chasana, I stopped. I don't come home from Toronto or Montreal anymore at night by plane. Unless I, I'm going on cloud with a private plane. But I'm going to a chasana or something like that. I go by car. So I could get home a quarter to four, so I could dive in, in a regular minion. Because one time, I missed the, and that wasn't my fault. The plane was canceled in Toronto, and I had to dive in at a 915 minion in Landau's. And I'm still, my face is still red in shame of having to dive in at, 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 at 915 in, in Landau's. Picture on the front page wasn't so red, Rabbi. <laughs> of me downing in Landau's. But I'm not kidding around, so I go by car. No matter how long the trip takes. If you go from Toronto, if you go from Montreal, you can do it in six hours. If you go from Toronto, you have to do it in eight hours. But I'd rather not sleep the whole night than have to dive in Landau's at nine o'clock. How have I been, Klal Yisrael has grown uh, in incredible, incredible ways. And most of the times, it is a number game. Obviously, there's other exceptions, which we're not going to obviously cover in such an uh, event. But how do we specifically in the Olam of the Beis Yaakov, by the girls, by our daughters, of uh, when they're not able to sometimes get into, or we should say we have to push into preschool, and then to high school, and then into camps, and then to seminaries, and then just to get a date. How is a girl not supposed to feel like just a number? Like she's trying to do, push herself to as much as she possibly can. She's doing the best. They're unbelievable Mitzianis is what's, what, what we have today. And yet they just feel like it's just a number that they hear and who could push them this way, that way, till they get the bare minimum of what they deserve as a basic right. What are you referring to? Ch girls that have a hard time getting into a high school of choice? It's Elementary not, school kids you're not talking about, a five and a half year old. Many schools, there are many schools, there is that case. Many yeah, but the five and a half year old feels like she's... No, not uh, that, but when she knows that her whole journey has just been, my parents have had to do this, even the preschool... Five and a half year old? They tell them, the parents tell these, them later. But, oh, they uh, tell them at 10. They tell, tell them at 10, it's been so difficult to get, you don't behave, you know what it took to get in here. So they shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave out the first stage. Even when it comes to high school or seminary or camps today, you could be the most wonderful girl. Okay, but a lot of it is, let's be honest, we try very hard to leave nobody behind in getting them into school. 
There are good Askanim in every city, in every town that try their hardest. The schools mean well. Uh, there's a little confusion here. There are kids. With Derech Klau, a lot of people want a school that might not be the best choice for their child. And a lot of people choose that school because as I passed, because some of my friends send their kids to this school. But the school has a right and its leadership has a right to evaluate and say, for your kid, this just isn't the best place. So I go around very angry, very insulted, very upset. But if I would be more open-minded and I would be only interested in what's best for my child, I wouldn't be in this dilemma. It's not so simple. I'm going past that. That's you're, you're going, this is coffee table no, no, talk. That's, I'm going past that conversation. I'm saying even to get into a camp today, there's, a, there's just there's limited. It seems like there's limited. It's not even, forget about the ones who just so go whatever's trendy. Also, if you want to go to a non-trendy camp where it's basically scholarship for all, uh, uh, but it's a nebby camp. So instead of raising the kid not to get stuck that the worst thing in the world is nebbiness, and fakert, we, we, we were proud of being nebby. <laughs> Jews are always nebby. The guy even looked down at us. We're very nebby. They beat us up wherever we go. Wherever we were in any culture, they, the guy even pushed us around. So you're going an assumption. No, 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 my kid can't go to a nebby place. My kid has to go to a high, you know, high class place where the Jones go. So I need to send my kid with the Jones. But there are too many Jones that already filled up all the beds. What should we do? Before we could give you a scholarship for a wanna being a wanna be Jones. So I go to the real Jones, who I know besides the scholarship is gonna maybe donate to my camp one day. It's not simple. Believe me, this is not coming from callousness. I work with Sears Nefesh to get children into schools. But we gotta, you know, before we say publicly something like signs like Avegemacht the whole Indian of difficulty to get into schools, I do believe that part of it has parental responsibility. I mean, Bachem also have to appreciate an every girl sometimes. Bachem? Oh. Girls have to appreciate an every Bachem. There's nothing like an every Bachem. <laughs> an every Bachem, you know, is not, is, not, is not on the internet, right? <laughs> We're a K'nai Nahara Bachem, a very busy uh, am. And just in general in society today, where there's a hustle and bustle, and we, there's very, uh, it's very challenged to find just the time between all of our social obligations, needs even, spending time with our, with our mishpachas to just sit down and learn sometimes, we're very limited. In terms of what should that be for someone who has, let's just say, a half an hour of time uh, that's in the day that they could really commit to as kviyas itim, hopefully they find other time, but as kviyas itim, should this be gemara, there's so many other ways out there, mediums of connecting to different parts of Torah, should it be Gemara, other areas, uh, if it's Gemara, Ian, Bikias, what does Rebbe suggest? To Orchus Chaim Rosh, <coughs> when he speaks about Shnai Mikra Becha Targum, how it's important to learn Chumash, and that, but then after a few lines, he says the Iker, for your Iker be Gemara, ki your Isig be Gemara, Whatever that word means, mida toiva hum yoid. The ain lecha mida toiva heimenu. Utnan the salmu toira keneget kulam. Those are the words of the rush. That means he starts off by saying how important it's to do shnaim yekachatagum and to learn the parsha and to know the parsha. But then when he gets into it, he says the ikar is gemara. And that's on what it was said, talmu toira keneget kulam. If you watch what happened in the last, I spent, I was Shabbos with, with a lot of Kirov people, with a lot of Bali Chuvas. And I watch it in my community, in the Syrian community in, in Brooklyn, how the Rabbanim brought the Olam back to vibrant of Eidus Hashem, all with learning Gemara. All with learning Gemara. The Lavdavka learning Gemara mean Yoni Chuva and Gemara mean Yoni Avoida. Pashit Shnayim Moichzim Betalus, Hakoyin is Tzoyin Ladir, Meruba, Cheskes Habatim, Yevamis, whatever you're learning, whatever you're learning. Why? First of all, it's Ruchnius. It's not a, for a, 
posh the person to explain. It's just klecha toira. Miyaminoi eish dos lomoi. Toira is fire. Fire kashers. Fire illuminates. Fire gets to the neshama. But if you want a little bit more down to earth, plausible explanation, what are you doing when you're learning Gemara? What are you doing? Take a Gemara, a sugya, and you go through the whole sugya. Mao live up with Chilubishab. So that's a sugya. Who is who's clearing? Who's giving and taking? Who comments? How does Rashi approach it by avoiding questions? How does Toysus ask a question which is a seemingly, seemingly contradiction to another sugya? Oh, V'yesh Loima, that you missed the whole boat. Who, who, what's playing out here? These are people that were zoiche to be mechaven what Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu and Sinai. Besichlom, and with their yugi and amelus, koma, that they say, Amaroyim Tanoyim, that was the Torah of Alper that was given to Moshe. Abaya was given to Moshe, Rava was given to Moshe, Toysvis was given to Moshe, Rajma, Rashi, Ramban. This was all given to Moshe Messinai. And all these Chachme Yisrael, Shebechol Adoris, that constitute Torah of Alper, that's the wisdom. So if my meager wisdom doesn't figure out life, the Eitzahara with the neon lights, with all the demyoinists enticing me with our shtusim from the veld. The Eitzahara is an ishmis keim v'chacham, the Gemara says in Adorim. The Eitzahtoi, ishmis keim v'chacham. But if my mind, my seichel, after a day of learning, a week of learning, a month of learning, my seichel starts having the, the trend of thought, of Shemayim, or Shemayim the people, or the Gedoshe Yaumma that made the Talmud, that made the, that made the Rishonim on the Talmud, then suddenly I could really, really understand that the Eight Zahara is talking nonsense. That's why we are Ike big Gemara. There's nothing like Gemara. And the Welt says if you're going to learn Gemara, you'll find time for Chumash also. A father, the Amunah is in the Chumash, not in the Gemara. You can learn your vomits a whole year and you're not going to get to the Yisaita Sayamuna. But if you're going to learn Gemara, the Shchumish will make you Shtaiga. You learn an hour Chumish on Shabbos, but after learning Gemara every day, that hour Chumish on Shabbos is dynamite. You won't learn Gemara every day, you'll learn that hour Chumish on Shabbos. Gemara is not Shaykh. And this is what you're all about here. What they've done over here is they've salvaged Gemara for the average person. They've salvaged it. Kenyan Masechta has taken posh to people like us and has made us masters of Gemara. We learn Divrei Elikim Chaim. One time, two times, ten times, a hundred times. Till we're coined it. What do you mean we're coined it? Maybe that was unsolicited, but uh... this is not a business. <laughs> I could be made you don't know to make any money on this. <laughs> For the last question, just before we uh, head to the learning, to some food and to learning, the men will be heading out towards the back. The women should stay in, in this room. <coughs> Today, there's such uh, extremes, and people are taking many drastic approaches in different ways. Baruch Hashem, for the most part, definitely in the Amat Torah, they're taking ways and means of mysterious nefesh to connect more to their Rabbani Shalom, to distract ourselves more from what's going on in the Havli Oilam Hazeh. But sometimes it's very difficult, and people are looking for chizik to uh, go off of uh, social media, to go off of different forms of uh, technology, to take themselves out of different lines of, uh, of business, is there any chizik that we can have, the pressure, the social pressure of living up to other people's perceptions and answering up to our friends and our neighbors, how to give us more uh, independence, more confidence to do, the, to do the right thing? I don't know how many people followed 
the person, the Levaya of the Mashgiach with Matis Yozatzal. But a theme that kept on going through for many, many of the people that were Maspid was that he shared, and I myself, Vadl Chaim, I had that experience with him also, that he felt when he went out on this tremendous war to preserve Dusha Samachne and to achieve different levels of abstinence from unbridled technology, he felt he was risking his life. He saw it in his historical terms, like Chazal, that this was a generation that was going up, with, was upwardly mobile in Avodah Hashem, and the Sahara unearthed some kind of a weapon, some terrible, terrible device that's endangering everything that we planted in this country. And he knew that going to war to such extremes, whether it was the city field Asifa, whether it was the organizations that went out there to create Shmira on the cell phones, the encouragement for whoever doesn't absolutely need one to not to have a smartphone. All these kind of things, he knew this is a war that's going to bring him down. It's just scary to say. But he knew this is a war that's going to bring him down. The Yitzhahar is not going to take it sitting down. There is a concept that you're not supposed to be Mizgore with the Yitzhahar. Well, we don't know what that means, and we don't know how it manifests. But this Heli Kiyid, he internalized this is the twilight of his career. I remember there was a meeting in, of Ravonim and Rebbeim in Torah Vedas in the library about two or three nights before City Field. And he came in there as a broken man. And he was, he was, he was very scared. He was very, very scared. So if we know now what a yid like that gave up so that we have a chance to master this Nisayan of inappropriate technology. Each and every one of us will feed the erich of our Nisayan and our ability to withstand the Nisayan. I think we don't have to explain more. Nobody's foolish. Let's forget about the inappropriate stuff, what's, what's known as Abizraya in the, in the, cell, in the, in the social stuff. But what about the, you know, we learned yesterday, Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, no da adavar. When he found out that Dosom Vaviram went back to Paroy and gave, them the, gave out the information that he killed the Mitzri, no da adavar, and then Paroy wanted to kill him and he had to run away. Rashi says, I always couldn't understand why is the Jewish people so downtrodden more than any other guy. It's not a new question. Moshe never understood why are the Egyptians persecuting us of all nations. We're not worse than all the other nations. Why are you all the other nations not being persecuted by Mitzrayim? Now I get it, Zakt Moshe Rabbeinu. So I state in Rashi. Because we have Dulturin. We have Bali Lashon Hora in our midst. How many do we have? Two. Two. Dosan and Aviram. And when he heard that they are Mesu Kola Anoshim Amevakshim is Nafshecha, Rashi says that it was referring to Dosan Vaviram, even though they didn't actually die. The Gemara explains the Chazal, Oni Choshev Kemes, they became immobile. They became, Hashem immobilized them. What does that mean? Which nation doesn't speak Lashon Hora? The whole American culture is premised on Lashon Hora. Saturday Night Live, or the late show, the early show, everything is Lashon Hara. There's nothing else there besides Lashon Hara. Gil Arayis is the tavlin to the Lashon Hara. Oh, but the fundament, fundamental entertainment is Lashon Hara, talking against people. This American government, it's not even in the seven mitzvahs, but ain't no yach Lashon Hara. Hashem doesn't even expect it from a guy not to speak Lashon Hara. <laughs> Doesn't include it in the seven mitzvahs. The Teretz says this is the essence of Am Yisrael. Goy echad ba'aretz. And Lashon Har is the greatest underminer of Goy echad ba'aretz. How much 
Did internet and its affiliates contribute to undermining Goy Echad Ba'aretz? Social media, what's it called? Uh, sharing, following. I don't even know what these words mean, Bar Hashem. Followers, people have followers. Followers, it used to be your Chesidah Rebbe had followers. <laughs> A let's yoyer zayd shemoy zayd yoyer let shemoy a a, a good for nothing baloshanara has followers in the alafim in the revavos. What happened to Klal Yisrael? The Mashgiach saw this. Then, what's going to happen with what President uh, Clinton, I think, called the 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 the, 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 the global village. Why do we have a global village? Any toyeva that happens anywhere in the world is happening in my dining room or in my pocket. Rahman al Islam. So you need chizik. You, your child starts putting up opposition. Learn the story of Matis Yol Solomon Zichri Levrach. Yeshikoyakal the Rebbe, you should lead us at Biyazagoyal Begzunta Hate.